he wrote, and Uriah, looking at David, appeared innocent, a leader in control of the battle and of the war. And Uriah got the letter. You know the story, but look at chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 9. In chapter 12, reading from verse 9, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Hey, look, at, uh, look at that in verse 10 now. In verse 10 it tells us, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from the house from thy house and because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife it was you know it eventually it's traced to the hand of David you see God knows everything he knows what you engineer he knows what you strategize. He knows what you do. The evil you do, you might do it through proxy. By proxy, you might do it through the hand of another person. But God says, I see you. I see it. You cannot hide that. You don't have a clean hand. You are not ready for heaven. And if you are, you know, you have been doing something like that to use other people to do evil, you use other people to tell lies, you use other people to manufacture stories that will scatter the temple, the house, the assembly, the congregation of the people of God, your hands are not clean. He wants us to live such lives is that we will know that our hands are clean one we don't do anything evil directly by our hands and we don't hide our hands use other people and send them on the sinners errand to go and do to go and say something evil we're looking at acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 we're reading from verse 23 in acts of the apostle chapter 2 reading here from verse 23 him being delivered by the terminal council and for knowledge of god ye have taken and by wicked hands have uh, crucified and slain. Here Peter was preaching to the people in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and he said, by wicked hands you found those wicked hands. The people that will do the crucifixion but you are responsible for the crucifixion. You are responsible for the, uh, for the slain of Christ that died. And then they said in verse 36, in verse 36, it said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom ye crucified whom ye crucified now they didn't go there personally and take the nail and raise the hammer and then crucify christ they did it by proxy they did it by other people's hands but he said you have done it and they understood and they accepted that they used other people's hands, but were responsible for the crucifixion. Verse 37, verse 37 says, Now when they had this, they were preached in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, we feel guilty. We're convicted. What shall we do? They were told to repent. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the damnation of hellish condemned hearts. The damnation of hellish condemned hearts. We're told in Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, reading from verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, I'll do it, I'll not 
be found out. Your heart is deceiving you. And that's a bad heart. That's an impure heart. I'm going, if I'm not going to be caught, if I will not be found out, if I will not be discovered, then I can do it. You don't really have a converted soul. You don't have real salvation. If all you care about is they will not know it's me. I'll be hidden somewhere and I will be controlling all the bad, evil things that happen. And once they don't discover it's me and I escape the judgment of men, you don't believe in God. God is not in your thoughts. You are not thinking God sees every action. God sees the man, the woman behind the curtain. No, you are not thinking of that. You don't really believe in God. You believe in God like the Pharisees. You believe in God like the Sadducees. You believe in God like the unconverted sinners in society. But in the real sense, to believe that God is everywhere. God sees everything. God knows everything. God will judge every evil thing that one. You do not believe. The heart is deceitful. And it says above all, all things and desperately wicked who can know it look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says I the Lord search the heart I try the race even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his day that's why in Isaiah chapter 5 reading from verse 4 Isaiah chapter 5 uh, looking at uh, verse 4 it says what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it wherefore when I look that it shall bring forth graves brought it forth wild graves it says everything I should have done I have done for us for the world as yes, Saint Jesus Christ he lived a perfect exemplary life and then he went to the cross and he died for us and then it says whosoever will let him come and he says whosoever comes I will in no wise reject we have the opportunity we have the privilege to have clean hands at Calvary from Christ that he can purge, he can forgive, he can cleanse, he can transform and change our lives. What can God do that he has not done for our salvation? And then he can purify our hearts, he can purge our hearts, he can sanctify us and make us to live a life that's acceptable in his sight. Are we willing to live that life or are we so interested in doing our evil? Are we so committed to doing evil that we don't even want to countenance Calvary? God says, what should I have done that I have not done for my people? Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitudes dried up with thirst. And then in verse 18, in verse 18, what to them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. It is picturing them as if they stand here or sit here and they position themselves here and if they don't have a chance to go out and do the iniquity, they stay there and strategize and they draw iniquity to themselves. It says one to them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a catch robe. It tells us in Hosea chapter 7, reading from verse 2. Hosea chapter 7, verse 2. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their 
wickedness. They don't think about God. There are people that they read the word, they, they study the word, they hear the word. But when it comes to practical action, they do not think about God. They just live like they used to live. They soil their hands like they used to soil their hands. And they defile their minds and their hearts like they have always done. They do not think about God and they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about they are before my face. It tells us in Matthew chapter 23, we're looking at verse 25. Matthew chapter 23, reading from verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Uh, have you, do you love the way Jesus Christ will not deceive anybody in his preaching? Do you, do you enjoy, do you appreciate Jesus Christ, the personification of the truth that it will not mean words, it will not speak indirectly. It will not speak with coded words. It will not speak with, you know, something you will not understand. He wanted them to get to heaven. He wanted them to have clean hands and a pure heart. He wanted them to realize that they were wrong. So he spoke directly, said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it tells us, Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Righteous unto men. Uh, do you remember Judas Iscariot? Only Christ knew that he didn't have clean hands and a pure heart. All the other disciples, they thought they're the same. I'm saved, he's saved. We're sanctified, and he is sanctified. And they had like the same responsibility. And they were sent out, and as uh, you know, Peter, John, and James, and Matthew, as they healed the sick, Look at Judas, he's also using the name of Jesus and healing the sick. And they all came back and he didn't say all the other people successfully did the work, only Judas is killed. No, nobody detected him, but Jesus said, Judas, that thing that doest, do quickly. But remember, it was better. The man of God, the son of man goes with her. He's going. He's been ordained by the father. But woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. And all the other people there could never guess that that was Judas Iscariot. You know why? He knew he perfected the trade. He perfected the maneuvering. He perfected using his hand and going to the Pharisees and saying, what are you going to give me? I'll betray him unto you. And none of the other disciples knew that he was planning anything. But what shall it profit a Judas, a hypocrite, a backslider, if he gained the whole world and he loses his own soul, and he says, Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Then it says in verse 33, in verse 33, ye serpents and ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape? the damnation of hell. The damnation of hellish condemned hearts. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at clean hands. We visit Calvary and we stay by faith after confession and repentance under the blood of the Lamb and he washes us and he cleanses us and he turns our lives around and he purges and he purifies us 
will have clean hands and a pure heart. The clean hands and pure hearts of heaven bound saints. You know, when you are really born again and you are part of heaven, you're slow in doing whatever you're doing. You're not so quick. You remember what we taught in school. You look before you leap. When you are born again, you ask yourself, don't be too much in a hurry. Your time is there. And say, what's going to be the consequence of this if I do it? What's going to be the interpretation of this before the Lord if I do that? What's going to be the consequence of this if I touch it, if I drink it, if I put it in my mouth? If I cover each up, what's going to be the coming back of this to me on the final day if I do it now and it goes to record? I only think since they don't know and since they can't see, I can. No, you can't if you are thinking about heaven. You know, those of us who got converted, really converted, many, many years ago, before we did anything, we ask ourselves, do I want to face the possibility of making restitution on this, the gain and the pleasure I have from this? If I do it now, am I thinking of the necessary restitution I'll have to make later, then we'll see the cost is too high. I, I won't like to make restitution on that, so I won't do it. I won't eat it. I won't smoke it. I won't imbibe that. I won't allow that to be part of my life. Would I, can I face God on the final day on this? Would I allow this to spoil my life and spoil my chance and debar me from getting to heaven? Or we ask ourselves questions before we did things. Those of us that were really born again many years ago, and because of that, we endeavored by His grace, by His enablement, by his discernment not to do anything that we will not be willing to correct and we have to correct that thing we have to correct that thing before we leave this world and cross over and get before the Lord we don't want to meet that thing at the white throne judgment we want to be able to say the grace of God kept me the blood of Jesus washed me and he kept me clean clean hands and pure hearts of heaven bound saints. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 8. In Matthew chapter 5, I say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're looking at three things here. Number one, number one, we're looking at clean hands of heaven bound souls. Number two, the pure heart of heavenly saints. Number three, truly confirmed Confirmed holiness with heavenward steadfastness. We're looking at number one. Number one, we're looking at the clean hands of heaven bound souls. Look at Job chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 9. In Job chapter 17, verse 9, the righteous also shall hold on his way and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger as time goes on as time comes on the challenges we face become greater and the temptations we face they become more terrible, traumatizing. And the threats we have, they become greater, life sapping. When we were younger, we had clean hands before the Lord. And then temptation came. There were those initial temptations. They were not, you know, very strong. 
and we could overcome them and we catch the clean hands but as time went on the challenges became greater the threats became greater they became more inviting and then now most people become weaker and weaker as they go on in life and you face more terrible challenges and uh, as you get older uh, many people they get more fearful and more timid and the things they stood up to earlier in life they cannot stand up to them anymore they have been kind of threatened so many times and they have felt the pain of defying all those tempters so many times they are now hands down but job said it shouldn't be like that the god who helped us in the earlier years is still there and christ who lives in us is greater than anything and anyone in the world and he says the righteous those who are righteous by faith and those who are righteous by the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ they hold on on their ways and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger amen, amen. you'll be stronger in jesus name now what we need to understand that you overcame were clean hands, courageous hearts, those earlier years, because in your salvation as a younger person, you were stronger than the tempter. You were stronger than the people that were inviting you to do something foolish and something filthy and something fleshly. But now, all those people that tempted you at that time and all the things that were drawing you at that time that you were stronger than the people who tempt you today and the people who tease you today and the people who draw you today they're stronger than those tempters temptresses of the past and so if you remain at the same level of conviction at the same level of courage at the same level of strength they'll overcome you but if the enemies of today if the tempters of today if the temptresses of today if the situation of today is higher and greater and stronger than the, the past and then you also you stay before the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength and you become stronger than you were many years ago no matter how strong stronger strongest the enemies the tempters are you'll always be ahead of them i will always be ahead of them if they pull you down you are not as strong as you ought to be. If they destabilize you, you are not as strong as you ought to be. If you say, okay, I'm still as strong as I was 20 years ago, that will not make it. That will not make it. You must be stronger than you were many years ago for you to have and to keep your victory. You will keep the victory. We're coming to number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the pure heart of heavenly saints. The pure heart of heavenly saints. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, reading verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. Put no difference between us and them on the side of God. He puts no difference between you and Enoch. The grace he provided for Enoch, he provides for you. Between with God, he puts no difference between you and Daniel. Between you and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same grace he gave them, the same strength he gave them, the same fortitude he gave them, he is willing to give unto you. He put no difference between us and them. Look at Peter. He put no difference between Peter and Cornelius. He puts no difference between you 
and Peter and Paul and Silas, the grace of God is still overflowing. The power of God is still available. They overcame in their own time and they maintained that purified heart and the pure heart. You will. Yes. You can. The Lord is not going to kind of cut down on his uh, grace, on his strength, on his promise because you are the one asking. There's no difference. He sanctified them. He sanctifies us. He purged them. He purges us. He preserves them. And he preserves us as well in Jesus' name. He says, put you no know, difference between them and us purifying their heart by faith by faith that's the only way he does it Enoch by faith Abraham by faith Samuel by faith Daniel by faith Shadrach Meshach and Abednego by faith and that faith is still what is required today and God has not changed the belief that God will preserve them from the pollutions of the land. And you believe that the Lord will preserve you from the pollutions, the farming field, the ears of the land. And put no difference between them and us, purifying their hearts by faith. He'll do it for every one of us. And look at this. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man there for purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified that's the word sanctified and made for the master's use and prepared unto every good work and then in verse 22 in verse 22 it says flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness flee from the other and follow this one now follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the lord out of a pure heart they call on the lord out of a pure heart the lord had given them that purity of heart it will give to every one of us. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance. In verse 15, it says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In all manner of conversation in all manner of conversation conversation in the day conversation in the night conversation in the family conversation outside the family conversation with believers conversation with non-believers that you make sure because God listens to every conversation and he watches every manner of life he watches what is done in the public and what is done in the private but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation look at verse 16 in verse 16 because it is written be ye holy for I am holy. Have you ever thought of that? Be ye holy because I'm in deeper life? No. Be ye holy because if my wife hears that, that I have that kind of, um, you know, suggestive relationship with that uh, woman, my wife will be offended and my wife has hypertension and I don't want to increase her blood pressure. No, be ye holy for I am holy. From nation to nation, God is the same. I am holy. From denomination to denomination, God is the same. I am holy. In the private, in the public, God is the same. For I am holy. The reason we uh, have the holiness experience actually will determine whether we will keep the holiness experience or not. I must be holy. Why? I want to walk in the church. 
What if there's no chance to walk in the church? I want to be holy because I want people to appreciate my lifestyle. What if after you become holy, they don't appreciate your lifestyle? What are you going to do? We must have the right reason. It says, be holy for I am holy. God is holy. And even if no man, no woman on earth sees what I do, I still must be holy because God is holy. And if we're going to God in heaven, if we're going to live with God in heaven, that's the reason to be holy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22 there, it tells us, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that she love one another with a pure heart. See that she love one another. If you love somebody with an impure heart, that's not love, that's lust. If you love somebody for an ulterior motive, that's not love, that's just hypocrisy. If you love somebody and not from a pure heart, a purified heart, I'm not asking for anything here. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for any gain here. I'm not looking for, you know, they repaying me anything. I just obey the Lord and I love brethren, the brethren. I love the brothers. I love the sisters with a pure heart, if there is any hidden agenda, if there is any impure motive, if there is any unlawful gain we're looking for, if there's any sinful pleasure we're looking for, and so we're showing love, we're manifesting love, God understands the motive. And that in the sight of God is not godly heavenly love. It says, see that she love one another with a pure heart fervently. We're coming now to number three here. Number three here, we're looking for truly confirmed holiness with heavenward steadfastness. Heavenward steadfastness in Ephesians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In verse 24, verse 24 says, and that he put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see there, true holiness. There is false holiness. There is hypocritical holiness. There is make-believe holiness. There is the superficial holiness we flaunt and, you know, we demonstrate before our neighbors so that they can say, you know, that person is holy. Now, all that means nothing to you and means nothing to God, but the true holiness that from your heart, whether people see or not, whether people praise you or not, whether people appreciate you or not, whether people honor you or not, whether people People persecute you or whatever they do, you say, this is unto God. My heart, my life, everything I've got, this is unto God. And you have uh, that recreation in righteousness and true holiness. That is the heavenly virtue we ought to have. And we need to be steadfast in that. Steadfast in that. Now, there are people who are steadfast. And they're, you know, just going around and around. Like the children of Israel, all those 40 years, they were always joining, always joining. They were steadfast, but they were not progressing towards the promised land. You don't want to be steadfast like that. Just steadfast, steadfast, doing the same thing, going the same round, and yet we are not making progress. Other people are steadfast, but they are steadfast in marking time. No progress, and they are not moving forward. They just steadfast. Fast, 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 fast here. 
about what we're talking about is being steadfast and taking steps that lead you towards heaven leading you towards heaven that what you want is that today you must add to the progress towards heaven and this week must add to the progress towards heaven and this event and this activity and this thing that I do for the kingdom of God I'm steadfast in it I'm consistent in it I'm focused on it but it's moving me forward and forward and forward can I ask myself a question and then you ask yourself a question are there things I'm steadfast in but doesn't give me progress are there things I'm skillful in and I'm persistent in and he doesn't move me forward. Are there things I'm persistent in and steadfast in? And yet, I cannot say that today is better than 30 days ago. Let's re-examine what we do so that the progress we're making, the confirmed holiness we're having is heavenward, heavenward. And it's moving us nearer and nearer the glorious day. We're looking at um, First Thessalonians and I'm reading from... Um, chapter 3 and reading from verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 12 and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do towards you. In verse 13, verse 13 says to the end for the purpose for the result he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all saints. May he do that, effect that in every life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is consecrated hands and persevering hearts of heralding servants heralding servants who are the heralding servants the people to announce to their world that christ is coming and they herald that and they shout that out and they inform other people christ is coming and they get all the people prepared for the coming of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 40 I'm reading from verse 9 Isaiah chapter 40 verse 9 O Zion that bringeth good tidings get thee up into the high mountain O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings lift up thy voice with strength lift it up be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. He comes, he comes. Behold your God. Say to the people of Judah, until they do not have any shadow of doubt, he is coming. He is coming soon. He is coming suddenly. And he wants to come for his people. He tells us in Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 6. It says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. He wants us to be the heralds like that. That we go to tell a community. We go to tell everyone that will listen to us that the Lord is coming. We have clean hands already. We have pure heart already. Personally, individually, as children of God, we are ready for his coming. But we don't want to go in. We don't want to tell other people how we got clean hands, how they can have clean hands. We want to tell other people how we got a pure heart and they should have the pure heart too so that we become like consecrated hands and persevering hearts heralding his coming as a servant. Three things we're looking at. Number one here, we're looking at committed heralds proclaiming 
aiming seriously of his sure coming. Number two, consecrated hearts, preparing subjects for his sudden return, his sudden coming. Number three, courageous hearts, perfecting saints for his soon coming. We're looking at number one. Number one, committed hearts, proclaiming seriously of his sure coming. He tells us in uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. In Zechariah chapter 9, reading from verse 9, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Thy king cometh unto thee. He is just having salvation and lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the full of an ass. That's the prophecy that Christ was coming and he was coming the first time for the salvation of the world for the redemption of all humanity and as uh, you know the time was drawing near um, Ze Zechariah said tell them tell them behold thy king cometh and that's what they did in Matthew chapter 21 reading from verse 4 Matthew chapter 21 verse 4 all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying saying in verse 5 verse 5 tell ye the daughter of Zion behold thy king cometh unto thee. They announced his first coming and we are now to announce his second coming. Meek and sitting upon an ass and if a coach of the fall of an ass. Look at number two. In number two we're looking at consecrated hands preparing subjects for his sudden coming. It's going to come. It will come suddenly. Malachi chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 1. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. It has now fallen on us to announce and to proclaim the second coming of the Lord. And it will come suddenly. That's what it says there, that he comes suddenly. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. First Thessalonians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 5, talking about the coming of the Lord. And it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It'll come suddenly, suddenly, but it'll come surely and then it says in verse 3 in verse 3 it says for when they shall say peace and safety when the world shall say everything is going well now and we're so we're reaching the, the utopian uh, era of the world civilization is increasing and now there's going to be peace worldwide it says when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman and they shall not escape the people that have not been saved the Lord will come suddenly and they shall not escape the people that are soiling their hands with bribery and corruption they're soiling their hands with blood they're soiling their hands with the filthiness of this world Christ is coming and when Christ comes, maybe they are still saying, yes, I hear Christ is coming, but you know, that's how they have been saying it. I will, I will reform, I will repair things, I will, you know, do things uh, the proper way, but I still want to do this and this, and they keep on soiling their hands. Suddenly, 
the Lord will come. And it says they shall not escape. That's what the Lord is telling us in um, Mark chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 35. Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 35. And it says the kingdom of God. It says, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning in verse 36 it says let's come in suddenly let's come in suddenly he find you sleeping then verse 37 it says and what i say unto you i say unto all watch in luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 here again is reminding us it says take it to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and with drunkenness and the cares of this life. Let's you bury your head in the sand of this world. Let's you throw your heart into the sea of this world. Let's you damage your future, your future in heaven, because you are so entrenched and you are so focused on the things of the world. Let's you are not deterred from the things of the world and the day of the Lord comes upon you, your sins of eating and drinking and the cares of this life will take you away so that so that they come upon you unawares then it says in verse 35 for the snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth what the Lord telling us then in verse 36 in verse 36 watch it therefore is coming, is going to come suddenly. What she therefore is coming, is going to come soon. What she therefore is coming, and the coming is sure. What she therefore is coming, like it was at the, in the days of Noah, in the days of Lord, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and planting and doing everything until the day came upon them, unawares. And they did not escape the judgment of the Lord. Watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the courageous hearts perfecting saints for his Son coming courageous hearts preparing the saints perfecting the saints and pursuing the saints and getting them back snatching them back from all the things of the world that will try to cloud their view and blindfold them and if we're going to do that adherents of the lord and as servants of the lord will have to be courageous why Satan may stand in your way and say, what's your problem? You're saved, go your way. Why do you want to snatch these people from my own hold? Because Satan's my hinder. He must stand in the way. Watch and be courageous. Why? Because the people themselves, you are trying to help and you are trying to bring them out of all those things in the world, they might be so glued to all their distractions and attractions. All the people you are trying to help, they might even hate you for it. You have to be courageous and say, whatever you do to me, whatever you say to me, however you act to me, I know my purpose, I know my goal, I must get you ready for the coming of the Lord. If you look at the thorns in the way, if you look at the challenges in the way, if you look at the disturbances and hindrances in the way, you might say, what's my problem? Why am I so eager? 
They have the Bible. They can read the Bible. They can get ready by themselves. After all, the more I run after them and pursue them, I want to get them out from their lethargy and bring them to be ready for the coming of the Lord. The more they throw all these things at me, and then you are wicked and your hands hang down, and you cannot you you can do something, but you don't want to do anything. That's why we need the courage, the courage to go out there and tell the people that are ignorant of the soon coming of the Lord so that they too will be able to answer the question who shall uh, abide in the house of the Lord and who shall abide in his holy hill and then they can say we that have clean hands and a pure heart. We're looking at Malachi chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 5. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And then in verse 6, it tells us, it says, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to their children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. It tells us in Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 28. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 28, from uh, whom we preach warning every man. Who will preach warning every man. Warning every man. That takes courage. You know, the father comes out has a daughter and that daughter is you know in the lap of the sin partner and the father says you know what are you doing there why are you doing that and the, the child the daughter instead of listening to the father he wants to she says what are you doing here why are you wanting me you know i love this young man this young man is the one going to get money and the father goes there to pull away his daughter and the and the daughter is fighting the father who wants to rescue her from a kind of a, a, a dirty life, a spoiled life, a filthy life. You know, they do that to us. We, we want to go and rescue them and we want to turn their heart away from their pollution, away from their evil, away from their sinfulness and want to perfect them for the coming of the Lord. And instead of fighting their field, instead of fighting their flesh, Instead of fighting their evil, they turn the fight at us. It takes courage for you to say all the same. I'm going to get you out of that all the same. I'm going to get you to Calvary all the same. I'm going to get you to the cleansing blood of the Lamb. We must have that courage. We're walking for eternity and we're serving the Lord for an eternal a virtue so that the people will be ready and come to the Lord. And Paul the Apostle said, Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The Lord perfect every one of us. The Lord perfect me. The Lord perfect you and prepare us for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. He sent his word to us and he's assured us to get to heaven and to be ready when the Lord comes. We must have clean hands. You must examine and check up. Are my hands clean? Do I hide my hand to control bad evil, sinful, filthy events? Am I totally clean within and without? And a pure heart is my heart pure? Is the purification, the purifying, the sanctification in holiness of the heart? Am I ready for the coming of the Lord? And he says that will be perfect and prepare us for the coming of the Lord. I pray as you are ready now, you keep ready in Jesus' name. This heaven, nothing will take away from your hand. Nothing will take it away from your heart. And while you're doing that for yourself, making sure before you sleep every night, and then you check up your life, am I ready? Because who knows, at night, at cock crowing, the Lord may come. So before you sleep at night, you want to check up, 
anything during the day that will block my way, hinder my way. You want to get that settled. And then uh, whenever the Lord comes, whenever the trumpet sounds, you'll go in Jesus' name. And the people, God is helping you to awake, to alert, and to draw, and to bring to Calvary, and to make them convicted and converted and consecrated to the Lord. The Lord will keep on strengthening you. You'll not be discouraged. You'll not turn back. That your converts and the people you are running after, you and them, them and you, will make heaven all together in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us and we need to respond for ourselves that the cleansing of the Lord and the purifying of your hearts will happen and we'll be ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. In law, we are praying tonight that you will open our eyes and you will teach us out of your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the word which we hear tonight will profit us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this evening to be blessed of you and to learn at your feet. Father, we pray that you will fill our empty vessels to overflowing tonight in Jesus' name. You prepare our hearts even as we praise you even this evening in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.
We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer, as we offer. Far on to thee, the sacrifice is of thanks given as we offer on to thee, the sacrifice is of praise. Hallelujah, we bring the of praise into the house of the of the Lord into the house of the Lord as we offer the sacrifice O seas of tens given as we offer unto thee Blessings and honor and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory and praise. Blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise. And praise, oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise, and praise. Oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ. I lift up Jesus, he is King of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Let us lift him up. Oh, he is King of kings, and he is Lord of lords. Oh, he is King of kings, King of kings. And Lord of Lords, let us lift him up. He is Lord of Lords, lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free. Hallelujah. He went for me. He went for me all the way. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, he went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. 
He died to set me, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, is the truth, and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Oh, the truth and the life. Yes. Is the truth and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. He's the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the way. Is the truth and the life. The truth and the life. I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Day after day, I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day, day after day. Yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask, to be like Him, all through life journey, from head to glory, all I ask, to be like Him, to be like Him, to be like Jesus. All I ask to be like Him, all through life's journey, from head to glory. All I ask to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask. To be like him all through life's journey. All I ask. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day. Oh, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day. Higher every day, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day. Follow, follow, I we follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow him, follow, follow, I will follow Jesus, anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Oh, anywhere, 
everywhere how we follow him follow follow how we follow jesus anywhere he leads me i will follow follow him oh anywhere everywhere i will follow him follow follow i will follow jesus anywhere he leads me i will follow him give me oil in my lamp keep me burning give me oil in my lamp i pray give me oil in my lamp keep me burning keep me burning to the close of day keep me burning oh lord i pray give me oil keep me burning oh lord give me all i pray give me oil in my lamp keep me burning keep me burning to the close of give me oil Amen. The Lord will keep us burning to the close of day in the name of Jesus. Uh, we want to welcome every one of us to the Bible study today again. And I'm trusting the Lord that we will not go back the same way we came in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to specially welcome all our GCK converts, our invitees and visitors uh, who are coming to the headquarters for the very first time. So, if today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, or you are one of the converts from the GCK, uh, please can you signify by raising your hand wherever you are seated. Please raise your hand. Uh, you are in the midst of people who love you and who are happy that you are here. Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, please, if I don't see you, kindly rise to your feet wherever you are seated. If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, our uh, convert from the GCK, uh, visit us. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. I pray that today is your first time. It will not be your last time in Jesus' name. Uh, our GS, our general superintendent, that's Pastor W.F. Kumi, is very delighted that you are here with us. Uh, we are also very happy that you are fellowshipping with us, and our GS bid me welcome you specially. And I'm trusting God that as God has been using him to be a source of blessing to us, it will also be a source of blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Our ushers are beside you. They will give you a slip of paper. Kindly fill the information required. Please fill in capital letters uh, so that we can, uh, it can be very legible and return to the ushers and you can please be seated. Thank you and God bless you. Our weekly meetings, three times we meet every week uh, on monday like this we meet for our bible study which is a time of systematic and expository study and the bible study is taken by our general superintendent the person of pastor wf kumi and it starts by 5 45. on thursday we meet for our thursday revival and evangelism training service it's a time where we are being revived and uh, we are being taught how to go out on evangelism at 5 30. Please let's commence publicity and invite our friends and neighborhoods, our, co our colleagues uh, in our neighborhoods. Let's invite them to join us so that they will experience the supernatural wonder of the Lord in their life. And on Sundays, we meet for our Sunday worship service. Every time we meet on Sunday is a time where we have enriching worship service. And the time is 7.45 a.m. Let's do well to start publicity, invite our friends and our colleagues and our neighbors and as we do so the lord will bless us and them together in the name of jesus please let's rise to our feet as we take our congregational songs 
We'll be singing from our gospel and psalm song, hymn number 52, Count Me. When you count the ones who love the Lord, count me, count me. When you count up those who trust his word, count me, count me. When you count up those who are saved by grace, count me, count me. Who are found in Christ a hiding place, count me, count me. When you count up those who do the right, count me, count me. Who are walking in the gospel light, count me, count me. When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me. Who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me. Count me with the children of the heavenly king. Count me with the servants who would serve his bring. Count me with the ransomed who his praises sing. Count me, count me. <laughs>
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Chapter 5. And Moses called all Israel, and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them, and keep, and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire, and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Neither shalt thou steal. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife. Neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there was such an heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them, and with their children forever. Go, say to them, Get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you, 
Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Chapter 6 Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggedst not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantedst not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the Word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We shall remain standing as we give our titan offering. Uh, I read to you in the book of Luke chapter 6 in verse 38. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Let's uh, raise our titan offering, all that we have brought to offer unto the Lord as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you because of the privilege you have given unto us to give unto you. Whatever it is that we give unto you, you have given unto us. Lord, we pray and ask that you accept our token, our sacrifices this evening in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I pray that you use it for the propagation of the gospel and the expansion of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please drop your title. Thank you. 